Hi, welcome to my video, and this is my Movado uh, Subsea Surf uh, 360. Uh, yeah, 360, I think it is. Surf 360 Ki Kingmatic. It's a Kingmatic. Movado Kingmatic uh, Surf 360 with the subsea case. I think it's from the 70s. I don't know the exact, exact date of this watch. I think it's from the 70s. Um, I got it. Uh, it was a non-runner. Uh, well, yeah, it was running, but it had problems. Um, it was on eBay. And um, so, yeah, I bought it on eBay. And um, I put a new... Um, it's... Uh, I put a new case on it. A new, um, sorry, not a new case, um, a new movement in, in it. So that's what I did. It took me, to get it all done, it took me a couple days to get all the uh, new movement in. So yeah, that's the uh, Lovato Subsea. Let me do check the lighting here. So yeah, this is the Movado uh, Subsea. It's the Surf 360, sorry. And it's got uh, uh, Movado and Zenith um, were one company at one point, and um, this is called the 408 movement, and it's a high beat movement, um, which means it beats faster than a lot of other automatic watches. Um, it's kind of a collector's item. Uh, and I got it for, uh, um, so I basically, I bought the watch for a hundred dollars. I think it was around a hundred dollars. It might've been about 150 with shipping. And, um, it's got the Sapphire crystal, the, um, the, um, the face is in perfect condition, as you can see. The face is in really nice condition. Those are the original hands, original case, original sapphire crystal, original crown. Um, even the date re the date wheel is original. And I'll tell you why that is. is because I got a replacement movement, and the date wheel was the wrong date wheel. And so I had to pull the old date wheel off, and I had to actually glue the date wheel onto the... Uh, other watch and um, so it worked out so it took a little bit of working to get everything working like a little bit of fiddling to get everything working and um, but everything works now and um, so a problem with these watches is that the um, this has this watch hasn't been overhauled and um, but um, so um, but anyways it's working good um, I got a nice uh, watch um, movement from Italy, so I finally got it a couple days ago, the movement, and uh, so of course you have to take everything off, you have to take the face off, the hands off, the crown out, and in my case I had to take the date wheel off the old watch, put the date wheel on the new watch, um, because I couldn't change the date wheels, because they're even though there's the same 408 um, um, movement, uh, the date wheels were different date wheels. Like the actual were, they're different, they're differently. One was a two piece date wheel and the other one was a one piece date wheel. So the two piece date wheel was the old date wheel. So I, I could actually just take the top part off the date wheel and then put slap the date, the two piece, the part of the two piece date wheel onto this date wheel. And, um, and then I got that on there. And then basically I'll show you inside the wall, the watch. So it's got a screw down crown. And um, this was one of the problems with the old watch was just to get the crown off or the or screw down case back. So as you can see, I had to grind. I don't know if you can see that, but I had to grind the edges of the case back 
so that I could get um, pliers on and take the case back off. And um, I'm ordered. I've ordered new. Um, I've ordered some new stuff. I've ordered a new gasket. Already is coming. I've ordered it. A new silicone gasket. So um, there's the uh, rotor. See the rotor, and you can see that it's a nice. The this new movement is in nice shape. And um, one thing that you might notice is that it's got um, something interesting and that is, is that uh, you might notice that uh, there's a piece of wire in there I don't know if you can see that there's a piece of wire right here so what happens is is that um, I did a couple of modifications to this watches. This watch, um, one of the modifications that I did to this watch was, of course, adding the old date wheel to the new date wheel. Um, that was one mod. Um, uh, the second mod is basically there's a frame holding the movement in the case. So there's a it's like three pieces: the case, the frame holder, and the movement, and the case back. That's four pieces. But the case back, the system is a different system. It's kind of an older system. So in this system, it did have case clamps. Like you can see, there's case clamps in here. And one of the case clamps was originally broken off. The um, When I found, when I got the watch, the case clamp was broken off. So you can see the case clamp. Uh, I put one of the case clamps back. I think it's right here. Uh, you can see that, yeah. So that's one of the case clamps is back on there, and um, but this wire here is basically bracing the case, and it braces to the um, the um, case the uh, frame. So there's like a frame around the the uh, movement. So this braces the frame. So nothing moves. So nothing is loose. And um, basically, um, I don't know if you can see the frame, but I took this frame out and I actually ground the frame off. I ground about a millimeter off the frame. And that's because I don't want the case back touching the um, any of the internals. like, And I don't want it clamping the case frame. In fact, I don't want it touching the case frame. So I, I had to figure out another way to clamp the frame in because I didn't want it to be clamped with this case back. The reason I did that is because the watch frame and the watch assembly is very sensitive and I don't want to put any pressure from the case back onto the watch frame or the watch itself. And um, because everything is really, really sensitive and I'll tell you why, because the date ring um, one of the things that I had to do is you have to, uh, there's two screws that hold the uh, watch face to the watch itself. And um, if you have it in the wrong setting, then the date frame won't, the date won't change. <laughs> so the date, the date wheel won't turn. So you have to get it exactly right so that there's a little tiny, tiny gap between the um, watch face and the watch. And so that the, uh, the date wheel spins nicely and it, and it works perfect. So you have to kind of fiddle with that. And once you get it, you got to really tighten those screws up, the two screws that hold the um, face on. And, um, and then when you put all the watch together, then um, once I, I noticed that um, the date wheel is really, really sensitive on these watches. So anything that's touching the date wheel and it's really, the design is that any good thing could touch the date wheel. The frame here can touch the date wheel, and the pressure on the case can touch the, can push the date wheel. So that's why you want to isolate everything from the back of the case, because you want that date wheel, nothing to move that date wheel, so that it can work properly. And that's one of the problems with these watches. Another one of the problems with these watches is that the grease gets really old. And um, what I the guy one of the reasons that the guy turfed this watch I think and sold it. Is because what happened was is that the um, 
the time setting wasn't setting. And uh, the reason the time setting wasn't setting was because the grease gets really old and then you can't, you can barely move and set the time. And uh, rather than overhaul the entire watch, all I did was basically I pulled the crown out and the way you pull the crown out is you turn this little screw here and you loosen the screw and then the crown comes out. And then once I had the crown out, the crown is in really good condition. There's no rust at all on the crown stem or anything. And um, I just put a drop of like Mobius oil on the crown and gently put it back in and worked it around. And now it's nicely moving. Like it's sat over 24 hours. And so it's setting nicely now. So the time is setting good. So that solved that problem and that the oil that I added loosened everything up. So that was great. And as you can see, this new movement is really in good shape. And uh, it's in there solid now with that with my little wire thing. It's pretty solid in there. It's not moving around. So in a good situation, what you want is you want everything solid in there you don't want anything banging around inside you don't want the watch banging around in the case and that sounds like ridiculous but you'd be surprised um, so you never want to hear anything clanking inside your case you want it nice and securely held you want the watch nice and secure and um, and you want that weight to spin freely and uh, and then you don't want anything touching the weight as well you don't want the case to touch the weight so the ultimate situation is when you put the case back on and then you shake your watch all you hear is the silent spin of the of the of the rotor that's all you hear you can shake your watch and all you hear is that little you don't hear anything knocking or anything and that's exactly what you want to hear because you want everything nice and secure in there nothing moving around and, um, but anyway, it's a nice watch. It's got uh, 20 millimeter lugs. Um, so I've put like 200, around 200, 250, maybe even $300. Um, if you do up all of the shipping charges and everything, yeah, I've put about two, 250, $300 into this, uh, watch right now. So I got the new movement. I was lucky to get the movement for this watch that would fit this watch. And, um, and then the old case. And, um, so, it, um, it's been pretty good. It's been a bit of a nail biter, but it's, it's good now. And I'm over, I think I'm over the sweat, the sweaty parts now, the, the nail biters. So I ordered a gasket, I ordered a silicone gasket, which is coming. Um, and, uh, so it's my solution is the wire solution. I'll check it, you know, I'll wear the watch for a little while and then I'll check it and see if it's holding up. The wire is holding everything securely. Um, and uh, so I re-loomed the uh, face. So, the, you know, I took off the old loom on the outside of the numerals and then I put some new loom on and the hands are loomed. And that gold, the gold second hand is uh, from the new movement because the other second hand wouldn't fit on there. So um, that was the other trick with this movement is that it could only fit the old gold second hand. Fits, uh, it, the, so the post is a little bit different. But these are the original hands and they're kind of beat up because they're very, very thin metal. So they just kind of look a little bit beat up. There's nothing I can really do about that. And the case is kind of chrome plated and it's a little bit beat up as well. Um, but there's nothing I can do. It's like a heavy chrome plate. And um, the, as you can see, the stem is in perfect condition. The uh, crown, sorry, is in perfect condition. That doesn't even need, you know, that doesn't even need to be plated. That looks really nice. So all in all, it's a good little watch for, you know, it's just under $300 with everything. And then I'm going to get uh, 20 millimeters curved um, bars, spring bars that are on their way. And a gasket and a strap's coming. 20 millimeter strap and um, and I'm probably going to do like my other watches where I get a um, a butterfly clasp 
um, for it at some point. So I'm going to be sh uh, looking on eBay for a butterfly clasp for it as well. So you, a lot of people don't know, but you can get those butterfly clasps and they actually, you can put them on, you know, they, a lot of them work on, depending on the butterfly clasp, you can actually just put them on like a regular le leather strap. You can take off the, um, you know, the uh, buckle off the uh, regular leather strap. You can buy any leather strap almost and you can take the buckle off and you can put it on some of these butterfly clasps that you can get online. I have a Cartier clasp on one and um, I have um, uh, another clasp um, here. I'll show you the Cartier clasp. So they're kind of pricey. I got this one for about 100 but the Cartier clasps are really expensive because Cartier, everything is expensive. So there's the Cartier clasp. But you can put that on any band, pretty much. If you get that Cartier clasp, you can put it on just about any band. Sorry about the focus. Um, but anyways, it's nice because when you have a, a watch that you really like, you want to be able to take it off in a hurry if you're, you know, because you don't want to get water on it, right? So that's what the Cartier clasp looks like. And I lucked out. I got it on eBay. They're quite pricey on eBay, actually. But you can use it on any strap at all. And this one is a Cordura strap that I've got on this watch. This is my Hublot. So, um, but anyways, this uh, new watch, this Movado, is going to be my, um, my workhorse now, I think. Because um, it's, I like it because it's a really durable watch with the sapphire crystal. And it's got the recessed... Uh, crown which is really nice so it's going to be in my workhorse watch i think this is going to be my daily runner um so yeah it's real i'm really happy that finally finally it was a nail biter for a lot i was real nail biter getting everything together and figuring everything out there's no manuals for these watches like there's not a lot online for um these uh zenith movados um working on these so anyways i hope you like that and um thanks for checking out the video and check out my other videos thanks for watching